We have the latest on Wednesday at 8 a.m. in the morning on what is expected to become our ninth name storm of the hurricane season, Isa Eas. The National Hurricane Center is watching this disturbance that is now officially pushed into the Caribbean last night. So it passed over Dominica early this morning, but you wouldn't be able to tell by the wind speeds. I mean, the biggest winds have actually been to the north, well, to the south of this area of low pressure. And that is the reason why the National Hurricane Center is calling this a potential tropical cyclone. Even though those winds are 45 miles per hour, you might be thinking, okay, well, you know, that's tropical storm force winds, but it's not organized like a tropical storm yet because that area of central low pressure isn't the area that has the strongest winds or the most convection, which is what we call thunderstorm development, which you can see by these red bubbles. Those are all cold cloud tops, which is an indication on satellite that you have that thunderstorm growth. But notice, I mean, this growth right now is all happening actually well to the south of this area of low pressure, which has kind of been the trend. I notice that things are just shifting more west than they are north. So I think that this path is going to have to be adjusted a little bit. But regardless, the National Hurricane Center right now is forecasting Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening, a landfall on Hispaniola, which is not a pleasant thing for tropical systems because it's a very mountainous island. So that is going to disrupt that center of circulation if it even develops. And that is good news as the storm potentially approaches the Turks and Caicos or Florida as we head into the weekend. So if it does interact with Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, or even Cuba, that is really going to keep this system from intensifying very rapidly. And in addition to that, we also have some wind shear between Florida and Cuba. So that's going to help sort of shred this storm apart a bit and keep things a little more limited. But the one thing to watch out for is this possibility that the track just keeps shifting farther south and then the system's in better territory because it's not going to interact with as many islands. So it has that potential to stay a little bit stronger and trend a little bit westward next week. So that's something that we'll keep an eye out for for you. But I do want to show the spaghetti models because I know that that's something a lot of people like to see just to sort of get that visual of what the model spread is. And as you can see, I mean, this is just where the center is forecasted to be. But imagine how difficult that is for models when there is no defined central area of low pressure yet for this system. So the trend to begin with already showing that on uncertainty. There is a pretty widespread difference between models for, you know, early next week. This is Sunday morning. And the other thing to notice is the fact that things are trending a bit farther westward. So there is that possibility that things aren't going to be as they appear by the time we get to Sunday. Definitely not a high confidence forecast. The European model keeps the storm pretty weak. Really, most of the models have kept this storm weak. And it does bring some pretty decent tropical downpours for the western half of Florida. Florida. I think anybody in Florida is fair game for some heavy rain this weekend, but the GFS model goes a bit lighter on that, giving just some pockets of maybe two to close to four inches of rain for parts of the Sunshine State into early next week, which really isn't too out of a norm considering the downpours that Florida sees this time of the year. So this is a storm we're going to be monitoring. It's definitely early in the season to be talking this much tropical weather. But for now, this is just something to watch and not really something to be too concerned about. You definitely do want to make sure that you have your hurricane plans all checked and ready because we are getting to that time of the year now where things do really start to pile up. I'm meteorologist Alex Calamia.